I'm Tony from Salmon Trout Steelheader Magazine, and today I'm with my good friend Yas, and he's been building spinners for 25 years, and today he's going to teach us how to build some 360 flasher spinners. That's kind of hard to say all at once. So Yas, what got you into building spinners? Well, after I graduated from college, uh, I used to go up to Oregon City and fish the falls. I used to go up there and anchor along the shoreline and uh, cast casting spinners for Chinook salmon. And anyways, my buddy used to hand tie the spinners up there. And uh, at that time, I didn't know anything really about it, but I discovered that I didn't like the way they looked. So after that, I decided I wanted to do my own. So ever since that, I went out and bought a spinner maker, bought components, and I've been tying spinners ever since. Wow, and today you brought just a small collection of your um, spinner building um, products. And so let's start building a spinner. Let's do it. Sounds good. All right, yeah, so here we are. Yas has got a, a wire ready to go into his twist tech machine that he's he's owned for 25 some odd years. And uh, so is there a certain thickness that you like with your wires or? Um, I usually like to use about a, let's see, a 3.3 three or the three, about 3.3 three to 3.7, mm -hmm. whatever's available. Right Yas has got in the, the twist tech machine here that he's, he's owned for, my gosh, 20, 30 years, something like that. Yeah, and, and it's basically still working away. So what you want to do is you want to lay the wire between the two posts and leave about an inch overhang, okay? And then you want to make sure when you twist it that the wire catches in that groove. Yeah. In that groove. And then what you do is you start twisting until you get that post to about a four o'clock position. Mm, nice. So and that's how you're gonna get your first loop. So now we're gonna put the hook onto the wire loop and then twist the wire around the main shank and that hook will not come out. Now, do you ever just use uh, split rings and make a loop? No, I just like to just directly tie it onto the, uh, the uh, wire itself. Gotcha. So then I start twisting. And then I will have is. a good two, three wraps. Nice. So so now you put on the tubing right yes. here. So what I want to do is I want to cut about a one inch piece of latex tubing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to basically put it over the wire. And I'm going to make sure I slide it down and get it secured onto the hook. And, and this tubing will keep the hook in place with the shank in a straight position. That is correct. Do you ever use uh, water or moisture to help slide that on there? Yeah, sometimes, but um, I've been doing it so much that usually I can just get it to so wiggle, it, wiggle it down. Mm -hmm. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're getting it there. Looks like it's a little little bit of a job, but necessary, right? How far down the hook shank do you go? I like to go all the way to the very oh, to bottom. The, to the bend. Like, yep, okay. the, the bend or the bottom of the hook. It's working its way there. And you just wiggle mm -hmm. it on there. Mm -hmm. Keep working it. Hmm. Nice. There, there we have it. Here's the uh, hook with the latex tubing, and you can see how it, it stays nice and straight with the shaft. So as it's moving around in the water, the hook's not flipping and flopping around, and and probably be a better a better hook set, you know, when you hook a salmon. So now we're gonna continue on. What's the what's okay? The at next this point, step? then I want to take. Uh, two six millimeter beads and uh, you can use any color uh, mm -hmm. for this particular. Wow, this is this is what I would classify as man jewelry here. Man jewelry, that's <laughs> correct. So I usually like to kind of match uh, the beads to the blade mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. 
So this one is kind of a um, fire red. Mm -hmm. So I'll basically just okay. look for kind of a red bead. Gotcha. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the beads on to the spinner. Yeah, those, those old guys. It's easier said than done. That's correct. <laughs> So okay. it comes out like this. Nice. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and put the bearing bead on. It's a 1 8 diameter. Nice. And then we can go ahead and attach the spinner blade to the clevis. Mm -hmm. And from there, we go ahead and put the clevis onto the wire. It looks like it's a little tedious as well, huh? Almost go over there. I'm my so eyes scared. aren't so good anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, more, it's yeah. more like my feel. Here we go. Feel these days, yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. Okay. Nice, beautiful. Now we're at the final step where we want to go ahead and put it back into the twisting mechanism. Mm -hmm. and we want to leave that gap. Got and it. I'm going to go ahead and get it inserted and make that twist. Over to like four o'clock, right? That's correct. Right nice. about here. Got it. Okay, make sure that buyer is bent. Right now I have a little excess hang, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut a oh, little bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and insert it. And do, the, do the final twist. Make sure everything lines up. Okay, and you make sure it's pushed. Got it. Now we have a final product. All right, beautiful. So let's go over the components of uh, making a spinner. I like to use um, a 0.33 to 0 0.07 gauge wire. I prefer the lighter wire because it makes the spinner lighter and it allows it to whip behind the Pro Tool better. Next component is a size two treble hook. The next component is the tubing, the latex tubing, uh oh, eighth of an inch. The next component is two six millimeter beads. And then we have an eighth ball bearing bead, a size three clevis, and a size 3.5 spinner blade. And those are the basic components that you need to make a spinner. From there, we have the tools. I have three basic tools. I have the spinner maker itself some wire cutters, and some scissors. Pretty basic, that's all I need. So, so Yas, can you show us exactly how you set up your rigs for your 360 spinners? Okay, let's start with a weed guard. I use a T-stop. From there, I use an eight millimeter single bead. And then I like to use these line locks. Um, these line locks prevent you getting twist in your main line and they basically latch onto your chain swivel. From there, I'm running usually about a 24 bumper. The bumper connects onto your flasher, 360 flasher. And then from there, I like to run about a 30 inch leader line with dual lock swivels on each side. And then I'll put my spinner on. And the reason I like to use a dual lock is I can change my spinners frequently. And that's it. So Yas, do you ever use scents on your spinners at all? I like to use them occasionally. 
Um, I like to use the Procure gels, super gels, uh, bloody tuna or some kind of cruel based product. And I'll usually apply those to either the hook or the tubing. And then that allows it for easier cleaning. And I usually use the Procure Badass Soap to clean my spinners after I use them on the water so I don't have any of that residue left. Well, thanks. That's great. And this is going to be very helpful. Oh, you know what? One one more question is the, the distance right here. I know you had mentioned that in the spring you like to use a little bit longer Bumper. Bumper here. Yeah, I like to use my, I just use a 24. Uh, the 24, um, the, the water's colder, so it gives it a, kind of a wider profile. So I start with a 24. It's just a personal preference thing. Everybody's different. And then, and then you go in the fall, you'll shorten it up. The fall, I like a little more action, so I will start shortening up my leaders. It's anywhere from an 18 to a 22. Got you in the, the, the lower water and less water pressure on the flasher. It, it doesn't need as, as long. Right. Well, the water warms up. The salmon are a little more active. So I like a little more action on my spinner to get it to whip faster. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. So, yes, there's the one obvious question that I'm sure everybody that's watching this would like to know. What's your go-to colors or, your, or, or why do you choose a certain blade over another? Okay, so um, in the morning, I like to start with a bright spinner because we have low light. And then as we gradually grow throughout the day, I'll throw on metallics. It just depends on if we have sun or not. So if we have sun, I definitely like to use a metal blade. Mm -hmm. um, for some, or actually for springers, I like to stick with the greens and then uh, for a, a green base spinner. And then when we go to the falls, I like a red base spinner. And that's base foundation for me. Yeah, well that's that's really helpful information for people that have never done this. You know, there, there's a lot of guys out there that are already doing this. It's a very popular technique. But you know, the people that are just starting, they need to learn all these things and, and, and you're a gem for helping. I'm them. not an expert, but you know, I just kind of go by feel. So I don't know if that really helps anybody out there, but um, my cardinal rule is, is the darker the day, the brighter the color, the lighter the day, the metallics go on. That's my cardinal rule. And it's about having fun, going out there, having a great day out on the water, being with your friends. And then uh, if you're lucky enough, catch a salmon, take it home and have it for dinner. That's right. right. And it's healthy, good yep. stuff. Yep. All right, well, thanks, Josh. Thank you. Thanks for coming out here. This was awesome. Okay. Yeah, I'll, well, let's do it again. We'll have to do Next some, time we'll be on the river, hopefully. some other technique, yep. yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe wherever that button is because I really don't know. But hit it. Thank you.